when it comes to the use of the calculator, uh, the TI-84 Plus in this case, for this section, there's really not a lot of use yet in the course that you're gonna run into. Uh, the one thing that I could foresee you might having trouble with is in calculating midpoints, you might run into a problem of having uh, order of operations issues because the calculator does use the order of operations and you need to make sure you understand how to do that properly in order to get the correct answers. So for instance, if we have a frequency distribution who's, uh, who has a class which begins at 15 and ends at 25, all right? So hypothetically speaking, that's what we have. Now, in the calculation of the midpoint of that class, what we would need to do is take the average of those two numbers. So the lower class limit of 15 plus the upper class limit of 25 and then divide by two. Now, here's where you could get into trouble because if you type it into the calculator this way, what it's going to do here is it's going to take the division first. So 25 divided by two will happen first because the order of operations says to do that prior to addition. So how do you get around that? Well, let's clear this off and there's two ways you can work it out. First, you could use some parentheses. So the calculator has parentheses that you can toss in and say, all right, so in parentheses, I'll do the 15 plus 25, close those parentheses, and then put divide by two. So that will tell the calculator, I want to add first and then divide. And then when you press enter, no problem, you'll get the correct answer, which is 20 in this case. Another way to handle it is to simply do the addition first. So just do that one calculation, get the answer, and then uh, take that answer and divide it by two. And what's really cool is if you just press divide, it will say ants divide, which means take the previous answer on screen and divide by whatever you're going to type in next, saving you from retyping a number which is great, especially if there's a long decimal or something. So if you just press enter, that will also get you the correct answer. The other types of calculations that you might have to do in this particular section uh, usually don't lead to any types of problems because the calculation of a relative frequency is just division. So if you have a class with say 14 items in it and there are 37 data items in the data set altogether. Well, the relative frequency of that particular class, you just divide those two numbers, and then that would be your answer for the relative frequency. You know, so as long as you can round properly to the correct number of decimal places, you shouldn't run into any issues because with one calculation, you shouldn't have any problems with uh, order of operations.